So the aim of my presentation is to give an overview of the two primary questions that drive my research. Those being, how can we optimise brain health and how can we better monitor brain health? I work within the School of Sport, Exercise and Rehabilitation Sciences where our broad research remit is to promote increased physical activity um, to optimise health across the lifespan. My colleagues and I are often associated with being focused exclusively on sport or sport related issues, but as you can see from the schematic of our research uh, themes, the majority of what we do is focused around understanding human movement in health, disease or injury and examining how physical activity can improve health and well-being across diverse communities and inform policy and practice. My focus is in the brain. I examine basic mechanisms of brain blood flow regulation, investigate how physical activity in different environments affect brain function and how brain function is altered by disease or injury. Through this translational perspective, I strive to improve our understanding and measurement of brain health. This is because we live in an ageing and increasingly sedentary society, both of which have negative implications for brain health. For example, ageing and inactivity reduce brain volume and perfusion. The good news is habitual physical activity offsets such age-related declines and lowers the risk for diseases such as stroke um, and dementia. Indeed, our ageing population is one key reason why dementia is now, reportedly, the leading cause of death in the UK. Similar to other chronic diseases, engagement in physical activity can lower the risk of disease development, reducing this major health burden. However, while physical activity and diet, behavioural interventions work, sustained adherence over the long term is notoriously poor. Therefore, to better harness the health efficacy of regular exercise, exercise needs rethinking and delineating. This starts with improving our understanding of how and what types of exercise facilitate improved function. Such knowledge will inform exercise guidelines and allow the use of alternative approaches to access the health benefits of exercise for both healthy and diseased populations. So what is it about exercise that drives the beneficial changes we get? From a first principles approach, it's important to recognise that it's the physiological strain that mediates beneficial adaptation. Therefore, by understanding the strain response better, are we better able to promote an optimal intensity, duration and mode of exercise which enhances adaptation? Alternatively, can we supplement exercise with other physiological stresses to optimise the strain response? As highlighted here in the centre of this slide, the strain can be influenced by various stressors and the resultant response is modulated by inherent factors within the population you're working with. This first principles approach is relevant for all organs and tissues that can be affected by lifestyle interventions. To bring the focus back to the brain, working our way from the outside in, we see potential stressors that could be used in isolation or combination to induce physiological strain and drive adaptive responses which ultimately influence brain health. Which one or combination of these strategies will provide the optimal stimulus for brain adaptation will likely differ between populations, but I think this illustrates the exciting range of possibilities to explore and work that we've begun here at Birmingham. So, on to my second question. How can we monitor, how can we better monitor brain health uh, to improve treatment and care? My training and background is in the use of transcranial Doppler, whereby we can index cerebral perfusion via beat-by-beat -beat measures of blood flow velocity through vessels supplying the brain tissue. The portability and robustness of this approach allows us to measure brain perfusion um, in dynamic settings, both in time, beat-to-beat, -beat, or locations, such as on a mountain or swimming in a flume. However, there are several techniques to examine brain blood flow as shown here, the selection of which can depend on the research question being asked, but typically is influenced by the availability and expertise. Here at Birmingham, we are in a unique position to have access to all of these imaging approaches and experts in each. As such, we have a great opportunity to flip this around. That is, by combining these methods, can we better assess brain structure and function? This is important as this approach also gives us the opportunity to compare imaging techniques and develop markers of brain health that are consistent across all the different modalities. The first question I wanted to ask was whether the two imaging approaches most commonly used to assess brain vascular health tell us the same thing. I'm very fortunate to work on this project with Dr. Carolyn Mullinger, an MR physicist, and together we bring our expertise in our respective imaging approaches to address this question. Uh, we, have, uh, we have uncovered some really interesting findings which I think may explain a lot of the confusion that's in the literature on this topic. This work is part of a wider objective of using a multimodal approach to assess the vascular, and the vascular function and health of the brain. 
I'm part of a cross-campus multidisciplinary team of clinicians, computer scientists, neuroimagers, and physiologists working to improve, um, working towards improving and developing the application of neuroimaging tools to improve the monitoring and treatment of the brain. So what lies ahead? What are the challenges and leading questions that we need answers to and which I think Birmingham can be at the forefront of providing the answers to? Optimising effective interventions such as exercise to treat and maintain the health of the brain are clearly needed. But first, we need to understand what constitutes the healthy brain and what are the robust markers we can use to guide personalised therapy. We need portable and reliable brain imaging tools to use outside of the specialised hospital care and research environments. Such tools will provide measures of brain physiology that could aid pre-hospital treatment of traumatic brain injury, as well as giving us an, an objective measure of brain health that your GP can monitor. So taking it from the imaging suite to the street. Key to making uh, the tra this translational and cross-disciplinary work happen is a new centre for human brain health which is a collaboration between the university and our health partners, which has the mission of understanding what makes a brain healthy, how to maintain it, how to prevent and reverse damage, and how to develop the next generations of, inter of interventions and tools to improve personalised healthcare. So finally, some take home messages. It's important to remember that regular physical activity is good for brain health, but by exploring novel strategies, we could further enhance the power and accessibility of this wonder drug. Work needs to be done to develop robust and translatable measures of brain health to be used on the front line of healthcare. Thanks. <laughs>